if you can come up with a name that really does a good job of defining what the experience of a product could be, that's exactly the scenario that you want. Well, I brought the rescue out to test with some players and he was the first one that day, Dustin, and he was just blown away by how far this rescue was going. I was describing the ball flight to the guys and just saying, wow, you guys are really onto something with this rescue. I remember the day, he, he's, he's a pretty laid back guy, but by his you know, reaction, we knew something was up. And he, he told us that this technology is unbelievable. He had been testing with DJ, um, and we all know DJ is long, but with, with this hybrid, it was just off the charts. Dustin uh, said a couple of times, just joking around saying, it's like this, it's like a rocket. We decided we gotta, we gotta get excited about this. Let's put something cool on the sole. So Matt, he drew that up on his whiteboard and uh, it, was, it was a very rock and roll font. So I started putting that in the CAD model. I didn't, never thought it would actually show up on a prototype because typically you know, it's got that MW number on there of whatever our number is. Our manufacturing group encouraged us not to, uh, not to do that. When that thing came back, I was like, what are you guys doing? I can't believe you put that on there. There's no way we're going to call the product that. Whatever you want to call it, this technology is a breakthrough, resulting in an immense gain in distance. Good names can be highly risky. When you have a product, though, that really has breakthrough, never seen before performance, then the idea of a polarizing name, it gets really exciting. It's a perfect name for the product. It's not just a name, it's the description of the performance. Because when you hit it, it is a rocket ball. Rocket balls. Rocket balls. Rocket balls.